What's this? A gift from our humble establishment. Though it may not look like much, it should help you to break the ice with those you meet. Queen's blood? Multiple reactor bombings followed. By Good morning, sir. I must apologize for not introducing myself to you earlier. I'm Broden, the owner of this inn. Your companions have all stepped out. Oh, but Barrett left a message he wanted me to pass along to you. You missed roll call, soldier boy. Luckily, you're on leave for the day. Don't waste it, though. Get your equipment checked ASAP. Sound advice? Perhaps a trip to the arms dealer is in order? Good idea. By the way, Cloud, do you have any folios on you? Yeah. In that case, you might also want to pay a visit to Magnata Books. They have stores all over, but the first official one was built here in Calm. And their resident scholars are remarkably talented. If you want to unlock the true potential of your folios, you should go see them. The first customization is always free. Finally. Rough day yesterday, huh? You've been waiting for me? I've been waiting for a chance to thank you properly. Without your help, I'd still be in Hojo's clutches, trapped in that lab. It was nothing. Even so, I owe you a debt, until it's paid. I'm going to accompany you. Getting your equipment checked, have them check mine while you're at it. Sure thing. Hmm. The rook's got a backbone. So the game is letting us loose in calm. The city or the town is much bigger than it was in the original game, and we're going to spend a little time wandering around here. But there was also something that I wish they had done in the original game that they're doing here, and you're going to see what it is. Look who it is. You up already? Drinking already? Ha, no, sir. Not gonna have a drop till Seventh Heaven's back up and running. First one will taste good. Damn straight. Especially because I'll be having it with friends at a huge party. Something this game is doing here that they didn't really do in the first one is take the characters that you play as, all of the party members, and just disperse them around the town. So you saw this happen on occasion, like uh, Costa del Sol, where like Tifa and Yuffie and Aerith and all those are just out in the town somewhere and you can go and talk to them. But most of the towns you found your way into, it didn't happen. And I think it's a good idea. Because it gives you, especially in the earlier, early games, like the ones in the 90s and stuff, there weren't enough, there weren't as many um, chances for character interaction as you'd think there would be in a game like this. Because, like, you have your characters and they have their s scenes, and it's, it's enough, really, to get across who the characters are. But you don't really get too many opportunities to have the characters interact with each other, and... For the most part, more is better, and it's all optional. So if you didn't want to talk to Barrett, you didn't have to. This also seems to play into the relationship mechanic. So, uh, the original game had a dating mechanic, which by the time you reached Gold Saucer the second time around, going through Gold Saucer, there was a date that Cloud would go on with either um, Aerith, Tifa, Barrett, or Yuffie. And it would depend on dialogue choices and stuff like that, depending on what you chose to be to who had the highest level of affection with the different characters. And by default, most people were probably going to have the date with Aerith, and then Tifa was the second most likely, then Yuffie, 
less likely than that. And then, like most, you no, know, most people would never see date with Barrett. Yeah, this seems to be putting that like a little bit more obvious how to manipulate the scoring because it was it was all behind the scenes in the original game, just math that happened. Counters going up, like oh, you say something nice to Tifa or her relationship mechanic goes up by one, something like that. And this, you're not seeing any numbers, but you are seeing this little, like, um, emoji appearing next to their name to see how it is affecting them. And plus your dialogue choices, it shows you a little, like, words, like, oh, yeah, this affected the relationship. So it, we can tell what's going on from here, and, like, there's no ambiguity, there's less ambiguity of how it works. Now this card game, Queen's Gambit, uh, Final Fantasy VIII introduced the card game mechanic. Tetra Master, was it? Or Triple Triad. It was called Triple Triad. Tetra Master was the nine Final Fantasy IX card game, which I didn't much care for. But Triple Triad, I actually liked. This, the, uh, the way it describes the rules in the game are a little bit hard to understand. It's better to just actually play a couple of games to get an idea of how it works, because it's not really that complicated. You have all of these different cards, and they all have these little glowing dots around the center point. And you drop your card down, and it places these little chess pieces up there. And, like, okay, so you have one, two, or three chess pieces. And you can only place one of your other cards down on those. Like, if it's one chess piece, you can put it down on one. If it's two, you can put it down on two. And two, three, if you haven't, put it down on three. And each card also has a number. So when you place that card down, it adds that to your score. So you have the three different lines. The opponent is winning by 10 on the first line. I'm winning by 6 on the second line. And I'm winning by um, 3 on the third line. So, um, so so we're actually we're like we're tied right now. Even though they have more points than me, we're actually tied. And I'm going to win this round because I still have cards I can place down. Because those green orbs, those green chess pieces mean that I can place cards down, but the opponent can't. There's no open spaces for them. So it, it's a nice little balance of having to think in advance where you're going to put your cards down and then resource managing the cards that you do have. I'm not going to be doing a lot of this game, at least not playing a lot of it on camera. Because I'm trying to do a freaking Let's Play series for it but it's not a bad card game it'd be nice to i wonder if this is like there's an actual game to this in real life impossible how could someone break through my perfect defense who are you deep down i always knew i knew i couldn't stay holed up in here forever walls can keep people safe but even the sturdiest ones eventually crumble right starting today you will be my new wall, as it were. And I am going to enjoy watching you crumble. And there are a few people around town that you can challenge this card game, and they're all a little bit crazy. <laughs> that lady put, like, a bunch of cardboard boxes around her, and it's like, this is my Bailey. <laughs> There's Aerith. Aha! Uh -huh. Finally decided to get up? Yeah. So what you been doing? Why, waiting for you, of course. You have? Got business with the bookstore? If so, I won't keep you. But if you're free afterwards, wanna climb the clock tower together? Sure. Let's. For real? Awesome! Since it was my idea, I'll go get the tickets. I'll meet you in front of the tower, okay? The town of Kam in the original game was more or less just where you went to tell the Nibelheim story. And then it provided, it, there's some NPCs that can give you some dialogue, but for the most part it was just the place to get the Nibelheim story, and it also provided you with um, shops and stuff. Now, uh, towns and stuff like that were vital for game balance in the older games because you needed a place to restock your potions, all that kind of stuff, as well as to buy new equipment, new weapons, new armor, all that kind of stuff. But it also served as a sort of 
a slowdown of the story or slowdown of the tension of gameplay. So it, it isn't constantly just in your face with like these hectic situations, which is something that Final Fantasy XIII absolutely fucked up, considering there are no towns. But Calm, as far as the towns in these games go, was one of the least notable ones. Now, this game took that one screen town and expanded it into this large, sprawling area. And there isn't a whole hell of a lot to do here, but there is a lot to see. It can be a little frustrating if you're trying to find things like, where's the weapon shop? I gotta look for the weapon shop. But it is, there's a, there is quite a bit to do here. Well, there is more to do here than the original game, anyway. Alright. The actors are terrible from here by far. Uh, morning. Morning. Everyone's kind of off doing their own thing. I noticed. Say, uh, this tank remind you of anything? Yeah, the place I made that promise to you. You remember the dress I wore? It was one of my favorites. Uh, the light blue one? With a bit of green in there? Yeah. This is such a quiet, peaceful town. Tifa is always testing him, because she's not entirely sure that this is actually Cloud. And he is, as far as I can tell anyway. But she isn't sure of that. So she keeps hitting him with these little questions. See, you remember the tower? You remember the dress I, I take wore? take our equipment as an order. What are you doing here anyway? Standing watch. One can never be too careful with Shinra. Leaving town is I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Flattery will get you nowhere. I'd say Tifa is actually asking quite a bit of Cloud here. I mean, asking like, oh, what dress was I wearing that day? It was one of my favorites. Like, even even if this moment had a big impact on him and it was something he was never going to forget, he's not necessarily going to remember what clothes she wore. I mean, especially considering that she had to... Well, no, not in this version anyway, the story. She didn't have to remind him of it. But even still... Like, it, it is a bit to ask of him. He may very well remember, and he apparently he does, but the... <laughs> she is perhaps going a little bit too far expecting him to remember that. Maybe I'm being a little bit too critical here. So I guess everyone's going to remember different things, and people are going to be influenced by different parts of their memory, but in my case, uh, let's relate this back to a story from my own personal life. The girl I fell in love with, um, the first time we met, I could tell you what day it was. I could tell you about what time it was. I could tell you where we were. I could tell you what we talked about. I could tell you what her facial expressions were. I could tell you what I thought about over the next hour or so after we had our talk. But one thing I could not tell you is what she was wearing at the time. I couldn't tell you what I was wearing at the time. And uh, I couldn't tell, like... Details like that, I couldn't tell you, though. But then again, everybody's different. That's just the way my mind works. This Welcome. Damn. That is quite the weapon you got there, mister. Seen plenty of action by the look of it. But saying that, it's still only a shadow of what it could be. With a little love, that baby will sing. Hmm, this one looks sharp. Something for the kids? 